Thank you, and uh, thank you for the invitation to come and talk about uh, the, the Rubicon hit. Rubicon, uh, I have to think about it, it stands for reducing the burden of, of infection in the community and the NHS. And that, again, is quite a broad topic, but at the moment we're focusing particularly on childhood respiratory infections, so we too will be looking to uh, interact with Ithaca on, on that theme. Uh, we're thinking not just about admissions, but uh, uh, infections uh, right across the, the community. And this slide just uh, illustrates the, the nature of the problem. So uh, in, infection, of course, is an extremely common event, particularly in children. And uh, for example, e each child will experience six to eight colds or upper respiratory tract infections in, in the course of an average year. And uh, m most of the children do pretty well with that. But it's estimated that about a, p a quarter of them will uh, be taken along by a worried parent to, to see the GP. And cl clearly that's a, a large burden of work and uh, a, a large proportion of a, uh, the, your average GP's time is taken up with, uh, uh, with children with respiratory tract infection. So it's a, a large piece of work. Uh, and uh, it's something which we are interested in seeing if we can re reduce. And then, of course, uh, of those who end up in primary care and perhaps some of those who don't uh, uh, go through primary care, a small proportion will be admitted to, to hospital with a suspected uh, serious uh, illness or a complication. Uh, and uh, perhaps about 1 to 2% of children with an upper respiratory tract infection uh, will end up in hospital. And we're interested to know if we can do anything about that. So the, this is an overview of our hit. We're interested in reducing the burden of respiratory tract infection. And thinking about uh, what we've just been, been discussing, uh, th there are a number of areas where we think we can uh, uh, provide new evidence, uh, where we can uh, perhaps uh, offer some interventions in order to try and reduce the impact of infections, both for the individuals and the families concerned, but also too for, for uh, the health service, for primary care and uh, uh, for, for uh, in terms of hospital admission. And uh, so we're considering a number of ways in which we can provide evidence uh, at these various stages of the infection process uh, in order to uh, uh, improve the management of these infections. And uh, a key area, of course, uh, which is quite topical uh, uh, in view of yesterday's Antibiotic Awareness Day, is to reduce the inappropriate use of antibiotics uh, in children with otherwise uncomplicated respiratory tract infection. Uh, it, although the, the recommendation is not to give antibiotics, uh, in practice it still happens perhaps for about 40% of children who, uh, a, a, who come to a, a, a general practitioner and we would like to be able to provide some evidence and provide some guidance on how best to re reduce this and to manage the use of antibiotics. One of the things we'd like to do is, is make available some of the uh, evidence that is already out there which, uh, which would help, for example, uh, a, a new parent of a young child understand what th uh, their child might encounter during the first few years of life. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty and parental anxiety which l perhaps leads to uh, uh, presentation to general practice. And if we can uh, tell these parents what they can expect as normal uh, and what they can do about it, uh, then perhaps we can reduce uh, some of the, the, the workload in primary care. And this is some data from the, the PITCH study, uh, which was looking at uh, <coughs> interventions to uh, reduce fever in young children. And you can see uh, uh, an outcome from this study that uh, combined use of paracetamol and ibuprofen uh, is particularly effective in reducing uh, fever in young children. Another area we're uh, interested in looking at is, is this reduction in uh, children presenting to, to primary care where they may well be, be given antibiotics. And th this uh, is a, 
a, a traffic like uh, traffic light system where we provide information as to what uh, is is normal in young children uh, what type of symptoms it's okay to continue uh, uh, caring for your child at home and uh, when you should consider uh, either telephoning uh, a GP or uh, NHS direct or one to one for, for advice uh, uh, when you should consider taking your child to see a doctor uh, and uh, uh, w when you should actually call 999 and by providing this uh, kind of advice to young parents perhaps we can help them uh, to give them some confidence in uh, managing their, their children at home. Just an understanding of how common uh, infection is in young children uh, it could also be useful. So for example, just about every child will experience a cough or a cold uh, during the course of the year and uh, other infections such as diarrhea and vomiting, uh, earache and wheeze are also very common. And ju just providing that information to parents and information on outcomes uh, we, we believe could, could be uh, very helpful. According to the NICE guidelines, uh, if you have uh, a, an earache, the, the, the parents are expected that, that symptoms will resolve within about four days. But as evidence from a number of studies indicates that actually a proportion of children will be symptomatic for considerably longer than that. And uh, by uh, improving the expectation uh, of parents as to how long they might expect the child to be uh, unwell and when it is an appropriate time to, to seek further help, again, could be useful. So, uh, we are considering a number of uh, evaluations uh, to, uh, to, to be included in our HIT. We're thinking about uh, a primary care clinic uh, uh, for new parents. We're, we're planning to pilot this, uh, and th this is to invite parents uh, of uh, a first child to come and to be given information about infection in children and uh, how this information could help them to have the confidence to, uh, uh, to care for their children at home where appropriate. We're looking at an expansion of a hot clinic at Southmead uh, and uh, this is a, another area of in interaction with Ithaca perhaps. Uh, the hot clinic at, at Southmead uh, uh, <coughs> sees patients with uh, chronic uh, respiratory illness, particularly when they have exacerbations, uh, and uh, tries to manage them on an outpatient basis in order to prevent uh, admission uh, or to reduce the rate of admission. And this is a service which is currently provided for patients with COPD and asthma. And we're looking to see if we can deliver a similar service for patients with bronchiectasis, another chronic lung disease, uh, which is characterized by a variable frequency of, of exacerbation. And of course, uh, as with all the, the, the hits, we're, we're looking at uh, patient and public involvement in the programs that we're doing. So what have we achieved so far? Uh, well, <coughs> we are uh, developing a number of proposals for, for funding and the, the primary care clinic pilot is based on uh, a, a model for chronic disease uh, illness, uh, illnesses and we're seeing if we can apply this model of, of uh, a clinic for, for acute illness. The traffic light uh, uh, system that I just uh, described to you will be uh, something that we would use in that to help manage uh, the expectations of new parents and to, and to educate them. We are proposing to expand the hot clinic uh, at Southmead uh, and to uh, offer this service for patients with bronchiectasis. Uh, we're doing some evaluation as part of that and we would like to uh, include uh, rather more microbiological diagnosis than we do at present because uh, uh, w one of the, the things about the, 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 these exacerbations is that they fairly routinely get treated with antibiotics and we don't really know if that's a, an appropriate way to, to, to manage these patients. Do, it, do they really have a bacterial infection that needs antibiotic treatment? And so by providing some a bacteriological and virological diagnosis, uh, uh, we, we can evaluate uh, whether that's an appropriate strategy. 
And we're also interested uh, in the undergraduate and postgraduate uh, medical education program in, in Bristol uh, because this has been uh, affected uh, in, in recent years by uh, the, the, the desires of uh, uh, government and so on. And it's possible that the, the areas of education that would be important for the next generation of GPs and physicians is, is something that requires a bit more input in this area. And so we are currently mapping what is provided in, in the area of uh, infection in the community in uh, education programmes and see if we can uh, uh, ha have an impact there. Particularly uh, uh, education on antibiotics and, and how these should be used. Uh, what what I education are, are our medical students being given on, on that? We've also put in a, a grant application to NIHR, uh, which is a, a feasibility study for a clinical prediction rule to reduce the, the use of antibiotics in, in children presenting with upper respiratory tract infection in primary care. So the, the, we've had a, a study called TARGET uh, for the last few years, which has been looking at children presenting to general practice collecting symptom diaries and also doing microbiological uh, testing uh, to, to see if that can inform uh, a clinical prediction rule to help the GP to, to identify those patients who are at risk of being admitted because we feel that one of the reasons why so many children are still being given antibiotics is because of clinical uncertainty ar around the diagnosis and around the prognosis of children uh, in primary care and if we can help in that respect then we might be able to reduce some of the inappropriate antibiotic pres uh, prescribing. Also around the area of antibiotics, we, uh, there's a, uh, we are planning to submit to the, the current NIHR call on antibiotic resistance uh, and uh, we're planning a, a, an RCT of anaesthetic eardrops uh, as a means of, of uh, pain reduction in children with otitis media as an alternative perhaps to giving antibiotics. We're also widening our collaboration to in, in, include paediatricians from uh, uh, secondary care because we have to uh, acknowledge that some of these children will end up in, uh, admitted. And we're also uh, working with, uh, with Lisa and with the other HITS uh, to, to, to incorporate PPI into all, the, all of these work packages. We're developing some links with industry because one of the questions we're asking is uh, are there simple technological advances which we could offer perhaps in primary care, perhaps in, ca uh, in casualty, which would help uh, to, uh, to manage some of the difficult decisions uh, around children uh, uh, and by providing, for example, uh, a rapid diagnostic test which might help to identify those patients at greatest risk of, of admission. We, we may be able to uh, <coughs> make, have, have an impact on the management of, of infections. And we're working with a, a number of commercial companies, companies who have uh, uh, tests which could be done, for example, uh, as in a point of care setting, uh, some of which are uh, already available off the shelf. We're also working with companies who are in development because there's a possibility that we might be able to develop something which is custom designed to the particular uh, problem that we are seeking to address. Uh, the HIT has appointed uh, an administrator and uh, uh, Kim is here and will help, for, I hope, to answer any questions. Uh, Kim is, uh, manages the, uh, the HIT and is ensuring that uh, evaluation is built into all stages of the HIT. And this is just the, uh, a list of the directors of, of the HIT. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter.